Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and thank you for joining me for the 25th episode of my series on the most important women in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today's segment is the first in a short series detailing the lives of the daughters of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Today's episode is on Zainab bin Muhammad radiallahu anha. Zainab was born into a happy home. Her mother was Khadija Rajulaha Anha, and she was the eldest girl of the Prophet's seven children. Khadija Rajulahu Anha gave birth to two boys prior to Zainab. However, both Qasim and Abdullah died in infancy. When Zainab reached the age of marriage, her son, Abu al-Abbas ibn Rabi, a wise, well-known merchant, asked for her hand in marriage. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam listened attentively to Abu Al-As, but told him the decision of marriage was not his to make. He went to Zainab and asked her what her opinion was and if she was interested too. She nodded shyly. The Prophet smiled and he understood her. Zainab and Abu Al-As were married and lived a happy life together. They had two children, Ali and Umama, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, first grandchildren. As a merchant, Abu al-Abbas would travel a lot, often being gone for days on end, which was always difficult for Zainab. During one of his long journeys, something happened back home that would shake the stability of Zainab and his marriage. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was called to prophethood, and Zainab and her mother and sisters were amongst the first to follow him. When Zainab's husband came home, she told him about what happened, which she had also heard from other people on the road. However, her husband Abu al-As did not immediately pledge allegiance to Islam, like Zainab would have hoped. I would have nothing against your father, and nothing would be dearer to me than following the same path with you, my dear. But I would hate for people to say that I have disappointed my clan by disbelieving in the deities of my ancestors in order just to please my wife. This filled their household with anxiety, tension, and sorrow. He did not realize the importance of doing what was right to please Allah. Years passed and the Muslims suffered through the years of boycott and endured the migration. Zainab didn't migrate with her sisters, but she stayed at home with her husband and children because she was awaiting Allah's decision on her situation. Later, at the time of the Battle of Badr, Abu al-As fought with the Quraysh against the Muslims against his father-in-law and his family and their beliefs and was taken captive at the end of the battle. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw that his son-in-law was one of the captives, he took him to the side and told all of the guards to treat the captives well. Zainab back home was in such an emotional state. She wanted to ransom out her husband and was thinking about her father's concerns as well. She decided to use a necklace her mother gave on her wedding day to pay his bail, so her brother-in-law took it over to where the captives were being held. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw the necklace, he started to weep because it reminded him of his beloved Khadija, Rajulahu Anha. He asked the Muslims to release Abu al-As and return the necklace to Zainab. They agreed. He then turned to Abu al-As and asked him to bring Zainab to him. When Abu al-As returned home, Zainab was overjoyed to see her husband. But their reunion was bittersweet, as he told her that he had promised her father he would send her to him. So Zainab reluctantly left to go to Medina. On the way to Medina, she was captured by the Quraysh and returned forcefully back to Mecca. She was pregnant and terrified and ended up having a miscarriage from the trauma. SubhanAllah. Abu al-As took care of her at home until she regained her strength and was emotionally ready to leave again. He waited for the right moment when no one was to notice that she left and his brother escorted her to Medina. When she arrived, Zainab radiallahu anha was happy to see her father and sisters, but she missed her husband. She was torn. While Zainab was in Medina, Abu al-As left to another business trip to Syria on a Quraysh caravan. A group of Muslims disabled the caravan, but Abu al-As was able to escape and went to Zainab's house for safety. In the morning, after Fajr prayer, Zainab called out in the mosque, I have given permission to Abu al-As ibn Rahi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh people, did you hear what I have just heard? They answered, yes. I swear by him in whose hand is my life. I knew nothing of this matter until 
I heard what you have also heard now. The Muslims are all like one hand against those who are outside their community. And the lowest of Muslims is entitled to give protection on behalf of the rest of his fellow Muslims. So we give protection to the one whom she gives protection. When the Prophet وسلم, went home, Zainab asked him to assure that her husband would get back his possessions. He agreed, but he told her that she could not have any marital relations with him because she was not lawful for him. You see, a Muslim woman could not be married to a disbelieving man. That night, Abu al-As was released and allowed to go home. He wanted to be with Zainab. He quick, quietly knocked on the door. Zainab woke up, startled at who was at her door that night. And she was relieved that it was her husband. She let him in. She made him some food and made him as comfortable as she could. However, she knew the limits of their relationship now. At this point, Abu al-As has seen the ethics of how Muslims treat their captives and their ethics during war. He was impressed by the Rasul's fair decisions and his strong love for Zainab. Rajulahu Anha made him realize that he wanted to be part of this great religion. So he decided to announce his allegiance to Islam in Mecca in front of the assemblies. Then he migrated back to Medina to be with the love of his life and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made them a new marriage contract. The year that followed was such a happy year for this couple and their two children. It was after that year in the fifth year of Al Hijra that Zainab passed away. Abu Al As was completely heartbroken, as was the Rasul, who was immediately reminded of Khadija Rajulahu on his death. May Allah bless Zainab and be pleased with her. Now, I love this story for so many reasons. When the verse came down about Muslim women not being allowed to marry non Muslim men, you see, the Rasul immediately applied it to his daughter, just like he would have to anyone else. I'm sure that it hurt him as much as it hurt them to be separated and to see his daughter in such pain, but that was his position as both a leader and a father. There were no exceptions to the rule, not even his own flesh and blood. The incident in the mosque was particularly interesting and it shows that he didn't want anyone to think that he was going back on his word or taking special favors for someone even if it was his daughter protecting someone, her own husband. And it seemed like Zainab Rajulahu Anha knew that and wanted to protect her father and his reputation from anyone thinking that of him, which is why she made the announcement in the mosque for all to know what she was doing. That's how much he loved his daughters and how much they loved him. Can you imagine Zainab's position having to balance between her father and a husband? I'm glad this example happened to the Prophet's daughter only so he could see how it worked and benefit from it. So much of the Prophet's actions and relationships are for our Ummah to learn and follow. For us to remember how we should or shouldn't act. Nobody, not even the Rasul's own daughter, was above the laws of Islam. I'm sure there were other girls at the time that were going through similar situations. There are many girls who are married now who are converted or their husbands have a converted or don't want to convert, who have family members that are not supportive of them becoming Muslim. None of these are easy situations and we should support one another, brothers and sisters. Please keep that in mind. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.